At the end of the last video, I gave you this problem to try. Here's our polynomial f of x, and we're going to do f of x divided by x plus 2. Now, because that is one copy of x minus a number, remember plus 2 is minus negative 2, we can use synthetic division. So I've set it up here. Do be super, super careful that you've got those zeros in there. We didn't have any x cubes. We didn't have any x's. I always like to, once I've written down what I think my coefficients are, just double check. Constants, x to the first, second, third, fourth. Yes, that first one was supposed to go with the fourth power. Then don't forget, we are pre-changing the sign. So we take the opposite of the sign that appears here because we're writing down the number that we are subtracting from x. All right, so then I bring down the 5, and now it's just a question of multiply and add until we're done. <laughs> so 5 times negative 2 gives me negative 10. We add and get negative 10. Times negative 2 is 20. We add and get 18. Times negative 2 is negative 36. Adding, we get negative 36. Times negative 2 is positive 72. We add and get 73. So we're able to now say that our answer, f of x divided by x plus 2, I'm going to actually just write that out as a fraction. 5x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1 divided by x plus 2. We can say that that's equal to, let's see, this is constants, x, x squared, x cubed. 5x cubed minus 10x plus 18, I'm sorry, minus 10x squared plus 18x minus 36 plus my remainder over what we were dividing by x plus 2. So that gives us a nice way of rewriting our quotient that we have right here. When we get to something called rational functions in a couple of sections, being able to rewrite things this way is going to be particularly helpful. I want to just point out that this also gives me a way that I could rewrite my original function f of x. That was my original f of x. If I were to multiply over both sides by x plus 2, I would get f of x, which was 5x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1, is equal to, now if I were to multiply by x plus 2 in order to get that out of the denominator, I would have to distribute it. Now rather than distributing it to each term separately, I'm going to distribute to each group. I'm going to distribute to that polynomial and then to that fraction. So I would get 5x cubed minus 10x squared plus 18x minus 36 times x plus 2 plus when I multiplied through by x plus 2 it's going to cancel here so plus 73. <laughs> Now, if I'm really truly trying to describe just f of x, then I don't need to record the restriction that x isn't negative 2. If I were trying to work with this quotient, I have just lost that information, and I would want to record that restriction. But if I'm just describing f of x, whose domain is all real numbers, this gives me a way that I can rewrite it. <laughs> now, this sort of goes with the fact that any time I have a division problem, there's a corresponding multiplication problem. So for example, if I do 6 divided by 3, that's going to equal 2. That's a lovely division problem. Well, the corresponding multiplication problem is that 6 is equal to 3 times 2. Okay. Now, what we've done here, we had a division problem that didn't work out perfectly nicely because we had a remainder. So if I did 7 divided by 3, well, 3 would go in twice but I'd have a remainder of 1. So now I would get that 7 is equal to 3 times 2 plus 1. I can modify the corresponding multiplication problem to say that almost gets me to 7, but I have to add that remainder. Okay. So that's essentially what we've done here. We've said f of x is equal to um, this 
quotient that we got. This essentially is in the role of the 2. That's what we got when we divided by x plus 2. So it's the product of what we were dividing by and what we got plus the remainder. Now, interesting thing to point out. So that gives me a way of rewriting things. If I were to simply evaluate my function at negative 2, so that's the number here that I'm subtracting from x. When we did our synthetic division, negative 2 was the number that we wrote on the outside. If I just do this the traditional way, I'm going to just plug in negative 2. So I'd have 5 times negative 2 to the fourth minus 2 times negative 2 squared plus 1. Negative 2 to the 4th is 16, times 5 is 80. Negative 2 squared is 4, times negative 2, we're going to get a minus 8, and then I've still got that plus 1. That's 73. That's the same number we got for the remainder. Well, I can see why that's got to be true, because this gave me another way of writing f of x. So I plugged in negative 2 to the original formula for f of x, which is also what I've written right here, but I could just as easily have plugged it in here. Now notice when I plug in negative 2 to the factor x plus 2, that makes it 0. So whatever I get here, I'm going to be multiplying by 0. That's going to completely kill this off and just give me that remainder. So it's not coincidence that I got that. And in fact, that's a theorem. That's called our remainder theorem. That says, if a polynomial is divided by x minus c, so that's the sort of thing that we could use synthetic division for. One copy of x minus a number. And of course, if c is negative, We'll be subtracting a negative, so this would look like an addition problem. <laughs> if that's the case, the remainder is f of c. So it gives me a way, other than just plugging in a number, of evaluating a polynomial. Now, in some of the homework, you will be asked to evaluate a polynomial using the remainder theorem. Those questions are a little bit gimmicky um, because, of course, we can evaluate by just plugging in, but they're just asking you to sort of confirm that, hey, we get the same thing if we do the remainder. It does occur to me that there's one time where you might actually choose to evaluate a polynomial that way. Usually, if somebody just tells me to evaluate a polynomial, I'm just going to plug in. But let's suppose I had a quadratic polynomial. Let's just suppose I had f of x is equal to 3x squared minus 5x plus 2. And let's suppose I want to find the vertex. Well, I know that the x value of the vertex is just the opposite of b over 2a. And here my a would be 3 my b would be negative 5, and just for kicks, my c would be 2. Okay. So this would be 5 over 2 times 3 is 6, so we would get 5, 6. So we've got to plug in a fraction. Now we often saw that we had a, often got vertices where we had fractional values and we had to plug those in, and it wasn't the end of the world, but this now gives me an alternate way of doing it rather than plugging in the fraction. If I want, I can say I know the y value of the vertex is going to be my function evaluated at 5 sixths, but I know that's going to be the remainder I get if I divide by the corresponding factor x minus 5 sixths. Now, if I were to use synthetic division, I'd say, okay, we've got 3x squared, negative 5x's, plus 2. Okay. The number that goes here will be 5, 6. Okay? Be very careful. If I'm trying to plug this in, 
the remainder I get is what I, if the remainder I'm looking for is the remainder I get if I divide by x minus that number, but I would pre-change the sign, so I would change it back to a positive 5 6 there. So now I would bring down the 3, and we've got to multiply. Now, since we are working with fractions, I might choose to write that out off to the side. We've got 5 6 times 3 over 1. That 3 will cancel, and then you get 5 halves. Okay. So 5 halves. Now I do have to add some fractions. So I've got negative 5, which is the same as negative 10 halves, plus 5 halves. That's going to give me negative 5 halves. And then I can multiply. 5 sixths times negative 5 halves is going to be negative 25 twelfths. And now I've got to add that to 2. 2 would be 24 twelfths minus 25 twelfths. It's right in, that's 24 twelfths. Minus 25 twelfths would give me negative 1 twelfth. That remainder is negative 1 twelfth. So that would be the y value of my vertex. Now, this doesn't get me around having to do some arithmetic with fractions, but it might be a little bit faster, or some of you might prefer it, to just plugging in and having to take powers of fractions, as well as doing the multiplying and the adding and subtracting. So kind of a neat thing, just gives us an alternate way of evaluating a polynomial at a particular point.